Hi and welcome back to the Blender for Motion Graphic Artists Tutorials. This is uh, episode 2, so in this episode we're going to be talking about the different layouts available in Blender, uh, how to render a frame, and uh, just a little bit about the interface in general, like saving, opening files, stuff like that. So uh, let's review the previous episode. Of course, you learned how to use the right mouse button to select an object. And once it's selected, you found out that you could move it around with the G key. GY, of course, would constrain it to the Y axis. GX would constrain it to the X axis. And GZ would constrain it to the Z axis. axis. And you can do that to, to pretty much any object. It doesn't really matter which object it is. And you can see where those objects are in relation to each other by using the middle mouse button to rotate things around. And this was a completely accidental but very nice example of how that can actually be really deceiving. Right? You think that that cube's right in front of the camera, don't you? Sure you do. From this perspective, it totally looks like it's right in front of the camera. Middle click, rotate a little bit around, and it turns out that it's probably not even on screen. So, very important to keep your world um, on a swivel. Just keep keep moving that world view and then see what you have been taking for granted and what where where objects are in relation to each other. Part of that is moving the world, actually. This is kind of your stage, if you will. You can zoom in or out on that stage using your mouse wheel. You can also shift everything around with the shift and middle mouse button. Just like that. So now we're not just rotating around the world, we're moving the world. So all of that stuff comes comes in really handy when you realize that you've just you've been working in one perspective and you've got no clue, you know, again, just like, where is that cube in relation to the camera? How high is the camera in, in relationship with that cube? I guarantee you, you will make mistakes um, early on. You will, you will have some, you will think that you have some idea of, of where an object is in relation to each other, and it, and it turns out that you've been just looking at it it's sort of the wrong, the wrong angle all along. There are some ways around that for motion graphic artists. I think it's probably even easier, I, I imagine, than it is for, for the 3D modelers. And I'll show you that, not this episode, but when we do the, the first animation, which actually will happen next episode. So I hope you've been practicing. So we've got the right mouse button to grab something, or to, to select it, rather. G to grab it and move it around. Left mouse button to drop it once you've moved it to where you wanted it to go. Left mouse button kind of anchors it, as they say. And then right towards the very end of the past episode, I told you about the very uh, handy rotate, which is R. And again, RY would constrain it to the Y axis, RX to the X axis, and so on. And also the S key, which is the scale key. And there's the scale key. Or the scaling um, tool, I guess. So that's that's what we reviewed. If that 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 took us 15 minutes last time. I'm sure you've been practicing. So that that quick review was probably enough to kind of remind you of all the of all the specifics. In this episode, like I say, we're going to talk about uh, the general interface of Blender. Again, we're going to ignore these fancy menu or panels all over the place because most of those you kind of approach when you need to know them. They're, they're not something that you can really step through and just kind of understand what they all are talking about uh, right away. So instead we'll kind of talk about some of the conventions of Blender. First of all, know that all of this stuff is quite adjustable. When, once you start using the panels, you can do all kinds of things with them. You can expand them if you need to do a lot of work with them. You can make new ones appear or you can make them disappear. You can um, even redefine what they are. And by that I, I mean, for instance, the, there's in the corner of each of the toolbars you'll see little buttons. And these buttons are defining what panel you're looking at. So in this case, let's see, it's that little icon 
that icon equals that one, so it's properties. This is the properties panel. Now we know. Now in this case, we've got little tabs up here as well. So it might be the properties panel, but this would be the uh, material tab. We'll get into that pretty soon as well. But anyway, point being, you've got a panel, and you've got a lot of times either tabs or you've got menus. So this is our um, outliner. That's what it's called, outliner. Um, so it shows us everything in our scene, all the different things that exist in our scene right now, and any properties that have been applied to them uh, appear right there. Very, very full of information, including here. This is our 3D view. As you can see, the little icon matches, so that's our... This is our 3D view, and we've got lots of different buttons down here. Just be aware that, that that's how that's getting decided, these little buttons right here. One button that... Uh, or one panel, rather, that you might find yourself using fairly often... I find myself using it... not fairly often, but it's very, very good to know about anyway is the user preferences panel. So up here, this is the info panel, as you can see up in the right hand corner there, or left hand corner rather. That's the info panel. You've got menus, layouts, which we're about to talk about, a full screen button over here on the upper right hand corner. That that comes in really handy if you're if you're not doing a screencast and need to use all 22 inches of your screen. I've got this minimized f fairly severely for my usual setup, but that's the info panel. That's kind of the one that you usually want up there. But what I usually do is switch that over to user preferences when I want to. And then I can move this down like that. And now I've got a whole new set of options here for Blender itself. Lots and lots of different ones. Add-ons are, of course, plugins. There's a lot that are just in, included in, you know, normal core Blender. Blender Core, whatever they call their default Blender setup, or their default install, and um, this is where you go to activate them. It's 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 taken on a kind of a Firefoxian kind of uh, model, which I think is really great. You you can kind of zero in on the plugin that you are interested in. You can activate it or deactivate it by putting a little check block there. You see, I have one called Screencast Keys. And of course, there will be more plugins. There are more plugins written every day, and you can you can download them and install them. And there are themes online too. Some people come up with different themes that they use. They they post to the theme file. You can load it in. These are default file paths. So if you've got a folder of textures that you want Blender to always go to when you load in a texture, you can define that here. You can define a sound folder and a script folder sequence plugins for video effects, all kinds of cool things. But that is the user preference panel, very important to know about anyway. So we're, we're going back, we're switching back over to the info panel. And that's one convention of Blender to kind of know about, that all these pa panels are, are, are really quite variable, or, or malleable, I should say. You can, you can just make any panel you want, really whatever you want it to be. As you can see, I've just switched over my properties panel to a 3D view, and so suddenly I have another view of my uh, of of my world over here. And and there are really times that you will want to do exactly that. There are some presets that actually some some layouts that actually have that as their preset with a with two views of the same the same thing. So these layouts that I keep talking about, I mean, first of all, you can change them yourself. You know, if you if you decide that's too much room for your view space, and you can you can do without, and you want something else down here. Then you you're certainly welcome to do that. You can absolutely change whatever you want to about Blender, so that it fits your workflow. And it's not it's not frowned upon at all. In fact, it's encouraged. So there's the default, which is this one. I actually rarely use this default layout. The one that I'm always in is animation, and this is actually the very layout that I was talking about earlier, where it has actually two different views of the same of the same thing. Why would it have that? Well, actually, this is the camera view up here. Well, it's supposed to be. Now it is. This is the camera view up here, and so everything that the camera is actually seeing is always up here in the upper right-hand corner, which is really, really handy, because 
if you don't know what is on camera, then it's very difficult to kind of design your animation. So this is a really great layout for 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 animation, and it's it's really the one that we're going to be using most of all in this in this series. So from now on, you can start Blender in the animation mode or the layout rather. Okay, um, so. That's as much, I think, about the interface that you really need to know in terms of what you're you're seeing in front of you and and the fact that you can you can change a lot of the stuff and kind of modify it to your liking, uh, certainly readjust it for your screen size, you know, different things like that. Not a whole lot more to say about that yet, I don't think. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about opening and saving files because obviously that's fairly important. I don't really want to open a file, I don't have anything to open, but let's save this, even though we haven't really done a whole lot to it, but let's let's save this, for instance. So we'll go up to the file menu. Now if you don't have a file menu up here, then you've probably left yourself in user preferences. So don't forget that all you have to do is click the little menu button, go down to info, and then you can click the file button. You can save this, well, save it as, you can save a copy, whatever. I'll save it as. And then what happens? Well, the, the whole screen gets taken over by this scary, weird file managing view. And this is actually very common in Blender. Because remember that most everything in Blender, it, it is a panel. And it's just whether or not it's taking over your entire view or not. So if, if I click here, right now this is the 3D view. If I find something called File Browser, Voila, there it is. That's that's exactly where we were before, if you'll remember. It's not really where we want to be right now. I'm going to go back to 3D View. I'll go to File, Save As. Now it takes over the whole screen, which is kind of convenient. And if you're using Linux, um, like I am, then you, you're, you're very used to the file paths. If you're using Mac, you should get used to it, because that's what your computer wants you to do, even though the, your computer doesn't tell you that's what you want. they want you to do. And if you're using Windows, it would probably look pretty different, I'm not really sure. It'll probably have like a C prompt and some backslashes or something, I don't really know. It, it's, it's, it's not as scary as it looks, honestly. These are file, these are folders, these are files. Click the up, you know, the back arrow, the two dots mean go back one directory. Or you can use the keys up here, back one directory, up a directory, whatever. So, typically you're going to start at your home folder. And then in my case, I'm going to put this in pictures, and I'm going to put it in Blender. And then I can save it. And to save it as something I would want to call it, rather than untitled, I would of course want to call it, um, I don't know, um, Cast Project 1. Well, 2. This is episode 2. So there's Cast Project 2 dot blend. Dot blend is the typical ending for the Blender projects. And then I'm going to go up here and just click Save. And now the file is saved. Easy as that, really. Obviously, with any as with any application and any anything that you're spending any amount of time on, you want to save fairly often. So that's that's I think about everything that I needed to tell you about kind of the usage of of Blender. Again, homework: just play around with what I've talked about. Explore the different layouts. See which ones you like, which ones you don't like play around with the different the different kinds of layouts that you can you can discover they're all useful at least to be somewhat familiar with just to kind of look at them and maybe design your own layout if you if you know of the of the things that you understand so far or or whatever open and close some files D download a blender file from online they're all over the place online free blender models download one open it up with the file menu just kind of get used to it in that in that sense. Just kind of how to navigate, and not not freak out when you see things like that pop out. How do you cancel? How do you how do you get back to where you were? Practice that, and uh, if you practice that, then next episode you will be ready to animate. And that's what we're gonna do next episode. So stay tuned.